Hi, everyone who's joined so far. We've got a few more minutes before start time. Just wanted to say hello. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, and we will get started here very shortly. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Lauren, and today I have Corey joining me, and uh, we are going to bust some myths about the image capture process with a few different types of cameras. So we just want to give you some tips and some tricks regarding uh, image capture. A uh, couple of uh, housekeeping announcements. Uh, this webinar is part of our ongoing support for all of our clients. Uh, in addition to the webinars, we've also been releasing a monthly newsletter. That newsletter has a link to the previous month's webinar, as well as additional resources uh, for you. So be sure to check out those monthly newsletters. Um, everyone is on mute. Uh, but we do have a Q&A box available to you at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we really encourage you to ask us questions throughout the webinar, uh, and we will either answer those questions live or follow up with you after the webinar if it's not something that we can address uh, during the webinar. So uh, feel free to pop in any questions you have in that Q&A box at any time. We'll be monitoring that uh, throughout the session, and uh, be sure to answer those questions uh, either, like I said, today during the session session or we will follow up with you. So, so as Lauren, Lauren mentioned, mentioned this is uh, basically a myth busting uh, on camera techniques. We're, we're going to be going over handheld as well as uh, tabletop cameras. Um, this is not a training. This is really for current users uh, who are already uh, been formally trained uh, with this. So it's not really beneficial for the new users just yet. They definitely want to get trained. Um, this is meant to really help supplement your knowledge and to uh, help you get a stronger grasp about the whole camera technique aspect. All right, so before we get started, we kind of just want to get a feel for the types of cameras that everyone has. Uh, we work with a lot of different clients who have different camera types. So uh, we're going to conduct a quick Zoom poll to uh, determine which camera types everyone has. Uh, so I'm going to launch that poll. 
And if you'll just take a moment to answer the question, we do have a slide kind of showing the different camera types. So uh, if you need a little reminder of the name of your camera, you are able to uh, use that slide as a reference. We'll give everyone just a few moments to answer. All right, thank you so much. So it looks like we've got a good mix of different users. Um, so we've got a lot of handheld users today and then kind of split between uh, the Remedio handheld device with the iPhone and the DRS tabletop. Also a few users with a different type of tabletop called the TopCon. So um, the good news is a lot of the tips, all of the tips that we're going to share with you today are going to be applicable to different camera types. Uh, so this should be beneficial for you regardless of the camera type you have. We're also going to demonstrate image capture with a few different cameras uh, to kind of drive those tips home for you. So let's go ahead and get started with some of the myths we hear about different tabletop camera techniques. Myth number one. So, so the, the patient's, patient's forehead, forehead does not have, have to touch, touch the, the forehead, forehead bar. Busted. Totally busted. This one, we want our patient to be uh, their chin on the chin rest as well as their forehead touching the forehead bar. That properly aligns up the head so that the, uh, the camera can properly find the uh, retina. Uh, if it is, if their forehead is too far away, then the camera is going to struggle to find your retina to be able to capture an image for you. All right. Kind of tying into that myth. Uh, the patient's comfort does not affect their positioning in the camera. Busted. All right. So um, we want to make sure during the exam that we are confirming the patient's comfort as we are getting the camera into position. Uh, so if you're uh, getting things ready and the, uh, the patient says they're not really very comfortable or they kind of seem like they're not comfortable, even though they told you they are. We really want to make sure that we are making additional adjustments. If your patient's not comfortable in their positioning, they're more likely to move during the exam. They're more likely to adjust in a way that can affect the image quality. So we really want to make sure that they are comfortable, uh, that they are secure, uh, so that we can get the highest quality images possible. That's when you should never stop an exam once it has begun. Busted. Definitely busted. Um, on some of the tabletop cameras, you do have pupil size. So, and you also have a big cancel button. You have the ability to cancel an exam before it captures an image. Um, this allows you to stop the exam before you flash their eyes, which can impact pupil size. It allows you to allow that patient to naturally dilate or use drop dilations if your clinic allows those. But, but that just gives you a, a parameter to stop the exam at any time. You are very flexible. To use it to your advantage. Now, the, this also definitely applies for the uh, the handhelds as well. Um, as you're moving in, if you don't see all four parts of the anatomy, or if you're struggling to get a good quality image, don't flash their eyes. You have the ability to stop the exam and allow them to naturally dilate or add and administer drop dilation as well. So it really kind of comes into play for both the tabletop and the handheld. Again, you have that flexibility of not flashing their eyes and allowing their eyes to dilate properly. Absolutely. And if you notice there's artifacts on the lens, you can pause the exam to clean the lens. Uh, so you're never, uh, you're never in a position where you can't pause or um, stop the exam to rectify any sort of image quality issues you might find. All right, last myth we'll talk about for tabletop cameras. Uh, the patient already knows where to look during the exam, so we don't have to tell them. Busted. All right. So the patient might not necessarily know where to look, uh, or even if you've told them, they might get distracted during the exam. So we really want to make sure that we are giving the patient clear direction, not just on their positioning, like Corey mentioned earlier with their chin and the chin rest and the forehead against the bar, but also we want to let them know there's going to be a light inside that camera that we want them to focus on when they see the light. So as the camera's moving into position, I might remind the patient a few more times when you see that light, be sure to focus on it. 
Uh, just like with our last myth, this also applies to handheld devices. So we want to make sure with those handheld devices, whether it's a light inside the camera or that fixation dot on the outside of the camera, if you've got one of those Remedio devices, the camera with the iPhone, uh, that we're very clearly directing the patient where to look during the exam uh, so that all the anatomy is in the correct location. Uh, so this is actually a myth that applies to all camera types. All right, so we're going to take a moment here to kind of pause and capture some images on our tabletop device. Uh, we've got a DRS behind us, which uh, a lot of you are familiar with based on our poll. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, scoot out to the middle of the room, capture some images on this camera using the tips that we've already discussed. Okay, so one of the things that we talked about is making sure that the patient is in a comfortable position. So a lot of times when we are uh, working with camera operators, the inclination is to make sure that the camera is actually level with the patient's face. So Corey, go ahead and come into that chin rest. All right, so you may not be able to see it quite as clearly, um, but I can see that Corey's forehead is not touching the forehead bar. So this is actually a little bit too high for Corey. Um, I find it very beneficial. Instead of standing right here and trying to gauge the patient's positioning, I will always come to the side to make sure that I can very clearly see where the patient is in terms of positioning. So Corey's gonna go ahead and sit back for me. I'm gonna lower that camera just a little bit. And one good frame of reference is to make sure that the top of that forehead bar is aligned with the top of the patient's uh, eyebrows. So this allows the patient to come forward and slightly down so that they can be a little more comfortable and press that forehead against the forehead bar. Corey, are you comfortable? I am. Are you sure? I am. Excellent. All right, so now that Corey is comfortable and his forehead is touching the forehead bar, his chin is in the chin rest, I am ready to go ahead and capture images. So we're going to switch our view so that you can see the image capture process from the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and press that start button. Uh, as the camera moves into place, I'm going to let Corey know, by the way, Corey, there is a green light inside the camera. When you see that green light, I want you to focus on it. And as the camera moves into position, we can also see the size of the pupil. So as Corey mentioned earlier, if we determine the size of the pupil is too small, we can press that cancel button and pause the exam so that uh, the patient has time to naturally dilate or we can administer dilation drops. So now that the image has been captured, we can go ahead and take a look at the quality of the image. Uh, we've got all four parts of anatomy present. This is Corey's right eye, so the optic nerve is on the right-hand side. We can see the vasculature above and below, and it is macula-centered. So I would feel very confident in submitting this image. Uh, it is likely to be gradable because it has all four components. So that camera is going to go ahead and move into position. Uh, again, we are going to get some information regarding the uh, size of the pupil. So again, I want to let the patient know for you, there's that green light inside the camera. Please don't forget to focus on it when you see it. As he's focusing on that, we can determine the size of his pupil. And again, we can hit that cancel button if needed. You may notice that sometimes the left uh, pupil is smaller than the right pupil uh, because the uh, right eye has already had an image captured. So that flashing light in the right eye can sometimes affect the dilation for the left. So again, we wanna make sure that we are verifying the quality of the image. We've got all four parts of anatomy present. The optic nerve is on the left side for his left eye. So I feel very confident that these images are likely to be gradable. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about handheld cameras. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a Q&A box at the bottom. If you have any questions at any time during the webinar, please don't hesitate to send those our way. Uh, we'll be sure to answer them as we can. All right. So we want to go ahead and talk about some handheld cameras. Uh, so we've got that Remedio camera on the left. That is the camera with the iPhone. So if you hear us say Remedio, that's going to be the device with the iPhone. And then we've also got a few other devices, uh, the handhelds, um, that bulk in the middle is very popular. So that might be one that you're familiar with. 
Uh, so let's talk about some of the myths that we encounter regarding handheld devices. So it doesn't matter if the patient covers their other eye, uh, the opposite eye that you're taking. Busted. Definitely busted. We do want you, uh, not all, some patients have struggle seeing the dot when their eye is uncovered. So we always ask you to actually cover the patient, cover their opposite eye so that they can fixate and focus on that dot a lot easier. Sometimes your other eye will play tricks on you and start moving the dot outside of the camera. So it's always good to cover it. Now ask that you don't have them close their eye just, just cover, cover it when it's open, open so, so that then they can focus on that dot and distinctly. Um, this, this does have the exception is with the uh, remedio. Uh, one of the remedios has a fixation arm where we don't want them to cover uh, the uh, opposite eye because their opposite eye is focusing on that fixation dot on that fixation arm for that specific camera. All right. So another myth we hear, you should always take images standing up when you're using a handheld device. That is busted, absolutely. So uh, we highly recommend that you take images while sitting down. Uh, most of our operators find that it's much more comfortable. We recommend using a rolling stool with an adjustable, uh, an adjustable rolling stool so that you have mobility moving from one eye to the other. And also so that you're able to adjust the height of the stool to accommodate your height and the patient's height. Uh, when you're sitting down, it's a lot easier for you to get very close to the patient. We want your arms tucked nice and close to your sides. We want the uh, camera to be parallel to the floor. Um, and so a lot of times when operators are standing, they tend to come at different angles that can impact the quality of the image. So sitting down while capturing images is highly recommended. Uh, we find a lot of operators, uh, it's more comfortable for them and easier for them to capture those high quality images. The last myth is you should always approach uh, the patient straight on. Definitely not. Definitely busted. So for the handhelds, we do want to kind of come in at a slight 20 to 30 degree angle away from the nose. Your bridge of your nose and your eyebrow can create a, a ridge. So if you come in at a slight angle to that, it evens out that ridge and makes it much more comfortable, not only for the patient, but definitely makes it easy for you. Now the cameras with the remedio cameras with the iPhones, those you especially need to come in at that angle. Um, it's uh, imperative that you do just due to the eye cup, the way it's built. Um, again, it, it makes it easier for you to capture a better image. It's more comfortable for your patient as well because they don't have that eye cup pushing, putting pressure onto the, the bridge of their nose. All right. So now we're going to demonstrate image capture with a couple of different handheld devices. We're going to start off by taking images with the Volk camera. So this handheld device, um, a lot of you are probably familiar with it based on that poll that we took. Um, so as you know, the image capture button is in the front of the handle. We want to make sure that we're holding that camera in a way that's comfortable for us. Keep a finger resting on that button so that you're always ready to capture images. Um, as most of you know who are using handheld cameras, it is a two-handed job, so I'm going to be using my non-dominant hand um, to support the camera and help me make adjustments. So we're going to back out to the center of the room where he's going to act as my patient. As we mentioned, I do want to be seated for this exam. That helps keep the camera parallel to the floor, and it helps me get nice and close to Corey. So I'm going to place my legs to the side of Corey's chair. I'm going to scoot nice and close. I'm going to keep my um, elbow tucked into my side. And so I'm going to make sure that I can keep this camera close to my body so that I've got good control while I'm making adjustments. So my uh, way of remembering what order to do things is we want to do hand and then land. So I want to place my supporting hand at Corey's temple. I've got my thumb out in front of his eye. And then I'm going to land the camera on my thumb. When I land the camera on my thumb, I can look at Corey's eye straight ahead in my field of view. And I can instruct Corey to cover his other eye, which he already did. And he is going to fixate on the light inside the camera. So we're going to change our angle so that you can see this process from the device itself. So you're viewing the camera, the image capture screen, just like I can see. So I've got Corey's pupil in my field of view. As I press the camera toward his eye, you start to see shadows at the bottom of the screen and light at the top of the screen. 
So another technique that we recommend is dropping the back of the camera slightly and pushing in toward the light. So we call that technique going up the hill. So as you're pressing the camera in, you start to see that light at the top, drop the back a little bit, press in. And once that retina fills the screen, open wide for me, we're gonna tap that button to capture the image. All right, and then it asks which eye was image. That was Corey's right eye. And we can see a beautiful image of Corey's retina. Just like with that tabletop camera, we are looking for four parts of anatomy, vasculature at the top and bottom, the optic nerve is on the right-hand side for his right eye, and so we know it is a macula-centered photo. So if this were a real patient, I would be uh, happy with this image. I wouldn't take any more of his right eye. I would move to the left eye to capture additional images. So we can go ahead and close that. So I just want to reiterate, um, we are coming at a slight angle to Corey's face. So we are letting the bridge of his nose, uh, it's not interfering with my image capture process. And when I landed that camera on my thumb, as I pressed into Corey's face, I dropped the back of the camera ever so slightly and tilted the front of the camera up. We call that driving up the hill. Uh, this is the one time that you want to head toward the light. So we're going toward that light so that the retina fills the screen when we capture the image. All right. As we mentioned earlier, uh, we are taking questions throughout the webinar. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to use that Q&A box there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, just type those questions in and we'll be happy to answer them. So the last camera we're gonna demonstrate is the Remedio device. That's the camera with the iPhone on the back. Um, and as Corey mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that we're really emphasizing the angle with this camera in particular. Uh, if you're coming at a 30 to 40 degree angle, it's much easier to access the patient's pupil. So while Corey is facing this way, I just want to kind of show the type of angle that we're talking about with this camera. Um, so just like with the Volk, I'm going to place my uh, knees to the side of the uh, chair that he's sitting in. I'm going to get nice and close. Again, we're going to employ the hand and then land. And you'll notice I'm coming at a pretty um, significant angle. I don't want to be to the side so far that he can't really see anything, but I don't want to come straight on. I want to kind of cut it in half about 30 to 40 degrees so that the bridge of his nose isn't interfering. We want the patient facing forward and looking with their eyes to that angle so that we can easily access the pupil and take a high quality image. So Corey's gonna rotate over to the side. We're gonna demonstrate that image capture process um, where you can see it from the camera itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and share our screen from the iPhone so that you can watch this in real time. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select the fixation for the right eye. I'm going to scoot nice and close to Corey. Placing my hand on his temple, landing the camera on my thumb. I see his pupil in my field of view. And uh, we've got that plus sign, that pupil centering mark turned on on this camera. So I can use that as a reference point. We can line that up with the patient's pupil. As I'm pressing the camera toward Corey's eye, I want that retina to fill the screen. I can see his optic nerve on the right-hand side, so I know he's looking in the correct location. And then I'm just going to tap the button to capture that image. And it looks like we have a little bit of a tiny issue with that camera. So I'm going to try that one more time. Hand and then land, approaching at an angle, pressing the camera toward his retina, letting those shadows go away. And I can see the optic nerve in the correct location. And then I press the button for image capture. So just like with every other camera, we're looking for a few things. We want to confirm that we've got all four parts of anatomy present, that they are clear and in focus, and that the optic nerve is in the correct location. Uh, since that is true for this picture, I can go ahead and move to Corey's left eye and continue capturing images to complete the exam.
All right. Anything you want to add, Corey? Uh, bonus myth. Uh, once you've been trained, you never have to practice again because you're an expert. Busted. Definitely busted. Uh, with, the, with the handhelds especially, we do stress that you want to practice, practice, practice. It is very much like riding a bike. Whenever you start riding it, it took you time. You didn't know how to learn. You didn't learn how to ride a bike in the first day. It took time to develop that balance, control, uh, what you're looking for, you know, trying to do it all at once. Um, but this is very similar to that uh, in the sense where the more you practice, the more efficient, the quicker, the more confident you'll be. Um, if you have a patient who's, you know, come to the office, grab a cord, just sit them down and take their photos. And you're going to walk into that patient a thousand times more confident than you are if you didn't do that. So I will always say practice, practice, practice as much as you can, because once you get that out of the way, once you get over that, that hump, this becomes very easy and straightforward for you. Absolutely. Just as Lauren demonstrated. Yep. So I, I've practiced quite a bit, so I can take images really quickly. Um, but I did not start off that way. So when I do training, I always joke, if I can learn how to use these cameras, anyone can. Uh, because I was not very good when I started using them. And I became proficient using that technique Corey mentioned, practicing just a few minutes every day. Um, my joke is three minutes a day keeps the ungradables away. So if you're doing a quick exam every day, if you're practicing on coworkers, keeping that camera in your hand, uh, you will develop that muscle memory. Like you said, you'll be much more comfortable and proficient. Um, so I see we've got a few questions coming in. And again, feel free to continue to ask those. Um, so one of our attendees has um, a Remedio device. Uh, it sounds like there is, is external. So I just want to kind of clarify real quick. The uh, camera with the iPhone, the Remedio device, there are two different versions. So the version that I took pictures with um, is one similar to the handheld. There's an internal light um, that the patient is going to fixate on. Corey is holding the other version. That's going to be the external fixation. So if you have a camera with the external fixation where you move the dot along the fixation rod, you do not want your patients to cover their other eye because they're using that eye to focus on this external dot. So that is the exception to the rule when it comes to covering your eye for handheld devices. This device is the only one that has external fixation. So they're going to be using their other eye to focus on that dot. If you've got any other device, you're going to have a light inside the camera. If your camera has a light inside, we want those patients covering their other eye so that they can really easily fixate on the light inside the camera. So great question. Uh, I also see we had a question that was answered um, by one of our uh, panelists. Uh, I just want to highlight that um, the lens cleaning process, we do want to make sure that we're using a lens wipe. So we have a specific type of lens wipe here. It does not have to be this brand, but you want to use a lens wipe that's similar to what we use to clean glasses with. Uh, so do not use the alcohol prep pads to clean your camera. That's going to leave some residue and um, you're not going to end up with high quality images. So start off with a wet lens wipe specific uh, to lens cleaning. And then you're going to follow it up with a dry Chemtech wipe uh, or some other type of dry wipe that's meant for um, lenses, microscopes, stuff like that. Uh, that will help clear away the residue from the wet wipe and ensure uh, that that residue is not impacting the quality of your images. And uh, once you've gone through those, uh, those wipes that are provided in your initial uh, go live in that kit that uh, Iris sends to you, uh, you're able to just order those from your medical uh, supply company. So uh, those wipes can be ordered. Uh, like I said, doesn't have to be the same brand, um, just something similar that will get the job done. Great questions. Absolutely. So we've got some time left. Uh, we invite you to send us any additional questions. Uh, we'd love to make sure that we can tackle any uh, questions on your mind before we end the session. So we'll give a few more minutes uh, for any other questions. And once again, we just want to thank all of you so much for joining us. We hope that you found this helpful. Uh, we hope that you've learned maybe something new today about your camera or about the image capture process that you didn't know. Um, all of the Iris University videos are available to you anytime from the Iris portal. So you can always go back and review videos on specific topics.
you can reach out to our help desk. We are available. We are here to support you. So um, you are never on your own. Iris is always just a phone call or an email away if you need anything at all. And you can go to our YouTube page if you want to view any of the previous webinars that we have as well so that you guys can see some of the other ones. We do post those on YouTube. Yes, lots of resources. And we link all of those resources in those newsletters. Uh, you can come visit us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, on Facebook, um, and on Instagram. So we share all sorts of fun stuff on those platforms. So lots of ways to uh, come and, and see what's happening over at Iris. So I don't see any additional questions. So we're going to give you all some time back. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, there is going to be a survey that pops up at the end of the webinar. So when we conclude the session, if you'll take a few moments to answer just those three questions for us, we'd love your feedback. Uh, thank you again so much for joining us and giving us some of your time today. We hope it was valuable. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.